Last week, a teenager in Manassas, Virginia was allegedly kidnapped by an illegal alien reportedly released into the country again by Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's administration. In January, two New York City police officers were assaulted by a group of illegal aliens who entered the country thanks to this administration's open border policy. In May of 2023, a teenage girl in Alabama was viciously assaulted in a restaurant bathroom by an illegal alien with a violent arrest record in his home country who was able to enter the country as a, quote, got away because of this administration's policies that ensure, open, uh, that ensure border patrol agents are too busy processing illegal aliens to actually patrol the border and do their job. This is what happens when you have an administration that doesn't care about border security, that prioritizes aliens over Americans and legal immigrants, and that refuses to enforce immigration laws in the interior of the country. I'm sure that we'll hear a lot of excuses from my uh, Democrat colleagues today. We will hear how the illegal border crossings have decreased. Of course, we all know that the Kamala Harris and Joe Biden are flying, are, are flying illegal aliens right now into the U.S. interior. We will hear that tired and flawed argument that natives commit more crimes than immigrants. Even if that was true, would it matter to Rachel's family or Kayla's mom or Jocelyn's mom or Weston's family? I think what is most frustrating to me as a member of Congress is what is happening today at this committee hearing where we have colleagues who are exploiting people's pain for political purposes. And unfortunately, that's what's happening today. The, the, um, the, the finger pointing at the administration by members of Congress is frustrating to me as a member of Congress because we are the ones who write the laws. It is legislators who are responsible to write the laws around immigration, around Im uh, border policy, and it is up to legislators to adequately fund the resources necessary. Ms. Guar. It's insulting that you would say that to these families, that you would make an assumption that they're being used or exploited in any way. You know, but I will do is I'll give you my number. It's 281-673-0736, and I'd like a phone call from you to see what you can do to help these families because every single week, I get bombarded with calls from victims all over the United States, but I'm just a small person with a small foundation that helps people here locally in Houston and Harris County. Not one time when her daughter was murdered and I was helping her navigate the criminal justice system did one Democrat call me to offer their assistance. It was only Republicans, and I am an independent. I, both, I vote both ways. I'm so it's insulting. You. No, please don't speak over me, because I'm still talking. Was I'm, I'm, I'm not done. To, I have the mic. I have the floor. The I have has, the floor. If you want to answer me, you ask. Has the I first want to also express my profound condolences to each and every one of you who've suffered loss. I have two kids. I'm a mom. I would do anything for my kids, and I cannot imagine the grief of losing a loved one in such a tragic way. So I, I want you to know... Um, how much I respect the courage that it took for you to be here today to share your grief and your pain. I represent El Paso, Texas, an incredible community right on the U.S.-Mexico border. I'm the only member of this committee who actually lives on the border, raised her kids on the border. I'm a third-generation border resident. And there is no one who wants to, to modernize our outdated laws more than those of us who live on the border. We are the families that have for decades been trying to help the federal government treat people with dignity and humanity. And we have long been asking for reform. I can tell you that I have been pushing a bipartisan comprehensive immigration reform bill that addresses outdated border policies and that addresses migration and immigration together. There are eight Republicans who've had the courage to join that bill. None of them are on this committee. And that bill is, cannot move because of the obstacles put in front of that. 
The administration has tried to, and asked over and over again for adequate resources. They've been hamstrung by obstacles put in the way, preventing those resources from getting to where they need to be. Mr. Ivey mentioned a Senate bill, a Senate bill so draconian, I could not have voted for it. It was enforcement only. Um, it was, to me, not workable because it was so um, focused, again, only on enforcement. But it wasn't Democrats who stood in the way of that. It was the folks on the other side of the aisle who torpedoed what was the most um, border hardening bill ever written. And this, that's what Republicans uh, called it. Um, and with regard to, Mr. Ivey, you mentioned wanting solutions and one of our colleagues mentioned HR2. <coughs> I know you're aware of this, but their bill, HR2, relies almost exclusively on Mexico. Um, and if Mexico wasn't doing the job that they're determining needed to be done in HR2, HR2 was a fantasy. It, it wouldn't do anything. My point is this. When there were mass shootings, including, as Ms. Lopez mentioned, a mass shooting in El Paso, Texas, by a white supremacist, 23 people shot and murdered in cold blood with an assault-style weapon, um, traumatizing an entire community. We held hearings that were linked to solutions. We wanted to solve the issue. We wanted to bring resolution. We wanted to find a path forward so that people wouldn't live with the kind of pain that communities like ours that have lived through mass shootings had to live through. There really, truly, that there is very little interest on the other side of working in a bipartisan way to find meaningful solutions. You all deserve that. Our country deserves that. And there are those of us in Congress fighting to get to those bipartisan solutions because we don't want to see families living in pain. We don't want you to endure the loss. We don't want anyone else to endure the loss that you all have endured. I and other colleagues are going to continue to work on those bipartisan solutions because that's what our country deserves. I hope you will join us in fighting for those bipartisan solutions because it's, it's, it's long past time that we get there. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Gentlelady yields back. Ms. Nobles, did Republicans on this committee, Ms. Nobles, Republicans on this committee or any of uh, Republican staff exploit you in any way to come to today's hearing? No, I, w I am not being forced to be here. I am here because I want to be here and I want changes to be made and I'm fighting for here, here for my daughter. And I can't speak for everyone else, but I'm sure the other witnesses weren't even forced to be here either and they want to because they love their children. In fact, my understanding is our, our Republican staff helped you get answers to the murder of your daughter that you didn't get from anywhere else. Our, our staff helped get that information by yes. going, going to DHS you have. and saying. Yeah, I, I, yes. How you about have. you, Ms. Morin? Did you feel, you feel exploited in any way? That's what the Democrats just said. No, I don't feel exploited You're here to tell your story about what's going on out there. Ms. Yes. Nungary? No, I do not feel exploited. Ms. I simply want to raise awareness that we need change and my daughter's voice and her memory should not get lost in that. Well said. Ms. Funder? No, I, I, don't, I don't feel exploited in any way. As a matter of fact, I find it very interesting that all five minutes for both of your testimonies on the left have not had any questions for us up here, but instead a speech. And I will tell you, I'm getting tired of hearing about the most comprehensive border bill, which did nothing for immigration, I mean, for American citizens. It gave visas to people who need to extend their visas, and it gave asylum to people coming over, and it did zero for an American citizen. And I would love somebody to answer to me what it actually did for American citizens. It did not do anything for an American yes. citizen. I'm, I'm asking, you said some very broad statements. It's insulting. These people lost loved ones. They lost children. And we want to see a difference. We may not understand everything that's going on, but I assure you that we're not being used in any way. And if today somebody calls that number that wants to help from any side of the aisle, we want solutions. 
That's so what do I not, just I'm still talking. So time, please don't. I just talked don't about. Don't make an assumption. Them. Don't make an assumption that we're being used. The time that is insulting. The time belongs this to the chair. Exploited. The chair now insulting. yields. Insulting. The chair yields the remainder of his time to the gentleman from Texas.